everybody. I'm Joe DeVito. I'm Indiana State Veteran Service Officer for the Southeast District of Indiana. And we're here at Bridging the Gap Studios today with State Representative Randy Fry. Randy, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Good to be here, Joe. Thank it's, you. Uh, it's great to have you here. Um, we, what we're doing here is we're just trying to let people know what's going on with our legislator um, as far as our veterans go, issues, and topics. So today's sure. show, we wanted to focus on legislation and who better to have than a legislator here. So I know you hold a very uh, prestigious position, not only a state representative, but right, with uh, for veterans in Indiana. If you could tell mm -hmm. us what you're... Well, Joe, I serve as the chairman of the Veterans Affairs and Public Safety Committee in the House of Representatives. So just about any legislation that uh, deals with any veteran issues will come through our committee. Um, take that very seriously. I've always been dedicated to trying to, to do everything that we can to help our veterans. Uh, I have nothing but respect for the veterans, so uh, it's quite an honor to chair that committee. Well, that's great. So the committee itself, how's it put together? How's the well, the Speaker of the House obviously chooses the chairman, but he also chooses the members of the committee. It's bipartisan, so there are uh, members of both parties there. And uh, and I chair the committee. We have a vice chair as well. And then uh, legislation is assigned to our committee as it's filed during the legislative session by the Speaker. And so then we'll uh, decide uh, what what legislation, if any, that we'll hear and then uh, begin to try to move it. All right. Well, I would like to say as a veteran, as a Hoosier veteran, um, it's great to know that we have a bipartisan um, committee up there. And, and I've noticed that, you know, there, there's, there are things that divide folks in different parties, but when it comes to the veterans' issues, I've seen nothing but, you know, smooth sailing and mm. trying to do what's best for our Hoosier veterans up there at the State House. So I think that's a, a great thing. Everybody works together on this committee. We do, and uh, Joe, we, we rarely have a, a no vote. It's there almost always unanimous because, as I said, most people uh, love our veterans uh, and, and want to do everything we can for them, but also our public safety personnel. Well, that's great. And, you know, we were chatting a little bit earlier today, and uh, you were discussing with me some of the process of how legislation gets to you guys, mm -hmm. and I thought that was really interesting. I thought maybe you could hit a little bit on... Um, you know how, how what the process is when when it's maybe the idea of legislation mm -hmm. to where it actually gets in front of you guys. Well, it could be a lot longer process. I think maybe your viewers are aware of. Um, first off, uh, anyone, uh, no matter who they are, can propose legislation uh, as long as they uh, have a legislator in mind that's willing to take that legislation and uh, turn it into a bill and file it. But uh, much of the legislation that we hear come from constituents. So it's always good to hear from constituents when they have an issue. In the case of a veteran's bill, uh, someone will bring the idea to us if, if I didn't come up with it myself, and then we'll file it. And then we begin to work the legislation long before session begins. Session this year is uh, early January. But we'll have meeting after meeting with the author of the bill, uh, with those who support the bill, and then those who, uh, who may not support the bill at least in its original form. What we have to do is we have to make sure that the intent of the bill matches the content of the bill. Um, a lot of times a legislator will come to me with a piece of legislation that they believe does this only to find out that it does that. Uh, and so we have to fix that before it ever moves into committee and then on through the process. And then we'll get all the stakeholders together and we'll try to find a quality a bill that satisfies everyone's concerns and still gets uh, the intent of the legislation passed. If we can do that, and only if we can do that, then we move the bill forward in a committee and then we begin to hear the bill. If we can't, uh, the bill won't move. Uh, we, we won't be passing uh, legislation that uh, doesn't do what, what we wanted it to do. Uh, and that's the job of the committee chairman to make those calls. Well, that's, that's great to know that there's that, that process involved where a lot of details getting paid before it gets to the committee. Um, I, and I bet there's a lot of ideas that are great, but by the time you finish writing it up, that intent versus the mm -hmm. is, well, is important for you to hammer out. That's true, Joe, and, and a, lot of, a lot of things come into play. For instance, uh, is it going to cost a lot of money? If it costs a lot of money, is it a budget year? If it's a non-budget year, there's usually no funding. So to move a bill that would have a high price tag, uh, fiscal risk, fiscal obligation on it would, in a non-budget year would be pretty difficult to get passed. Um, but then again, uh, you know, we, we want to continue to make sure we listen and, um, and continue to uh, try to move the bill, even uh, though we may be um, 
planting seeds for next session. Uh, a lot of legislation takes multiple years to get through. Okay, so so if, if a if a piece of the legislation comes up to the committee and it doesn't in that process in that in that session make it through, mm -hmm. it's not a a dead bill at that point. It can come back again. For it can be refiled the following year by another the same legislator or a different legislator. But uh, generally, that happens. And uh, each year, the uh, Legislative Service Agency, which is a bipartisan group of attorneys in the State House that helps us draft legislation, will contact the author of a bill that didn't pass and simply say, "Would you like to file this again?" Mm. Uh, and so it uh, saves a lot of time for them, a lot of time for us, and uh, you just you just bring it back. Hopefully, bring it back with the changes that were necessary to give it a better chance to pass. Right. I imagine the clearer it is and the more defined it is, when it does get to you guys, the better it's going to. That's true. The better chance it has, and the more you can do in that year. Mm -hmm. um, as far as um, clarifying a few definitions of things, when you say budget year and non budget year, mm -hmm. is that an every other year process, it or is. how does that work? In Indiana, the budget year is the off year. This is coming up on 2020. 2020 is non-budget year, and it's also uh, known as a short session. Short session starts in early January and must be done by law by the middle of March. The budget year, in the, in the odd year, uh, which the next budget we do will be 2021, uh, and that session runs to the end of April, another six weeks. Um, a lot of work can get done in another six weeks. So uh, the budget's a heavy lift, as you can imagine. Uh, current state budget's about 34 billion dollars. Mm. Um, that's uh, that's uh, quite a lot of money and it uh, funds every aspect of state government. It's a lot of responsibility. It's a lot of responsibility. And the first budget I voted on was around 30 billion dollars and I tell you when I did I broke out in a sweat because uh, that's just a lot of money to be spending you know and have your name on. It sure is. That's that's what we've elected you to do. <laughs> take on that responsibility. So if a piece of legislation is um, in the non-budget year, you're looking at probably more things that'll be passed or don't have a, a bill attached to A fiscal to them. responsibility. Right. So it's something that may be wording or something that offers mm -hmm. a service that's already there and may expand it but doesn't cost money. That's true. Or if it does cost money, it has a funding mechanism with it. Uh -huh. So uh, if we were to propose a piece of legislation that does have a financial responsibility, but we had attached, for instance, a license plate. Um, there are agencies who have license plates that they um, get a certain amount of money per each license plate that's sold, uh, and then that money would be applied to fund whatever program. So those those kind of things do happen in non-budget years. Oh, great! So that's a great uh, segue into um, one of our one of the bills that's near and dear to uh -huh. me at Indiana Department of Veterans and Affairs, and as a Hoosier veteran myself, is our uh, we have our Military Family Relief Fund. Right. Um, and that's a fund that's available for folks out there who, uh, any veterans who are in need, have a crunch, have something uh, in their life going on where they have a crisis, it's a one-time grant mm -hmm. up to $2,500. Um, if they qualify for it, they can get that um, assistance through the state, and, and that's funded through license plates. So. It is. So that would be an example of a bill that had funding attached to it. It was a way Absolutely. to fund it was through mm -hmm. the plates. Mm -hmm. And those are our military branch plates you can get. Uh, right. Any veteran can get those and if you're not a veteran... And please support that license plate if you're a veteran. That's a great way to help fellow veterans who are down on their luck maybe or have some unexpected expenses. And as you say, Joe, they can get up to $2,500. They can even actually get more than that, but they'd have to go before the board. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not... Otherwise, you can go through the IDVA, but uh, uh, I've done quite a bit of work on that. Well, I appreciate your work on that, and uh, you know, as a as a veteran here in Indiana, I appreciate that fund being available. By the way, you've mentioned uh, who's your veteran before. That was a bill authored by Representative Peggy Mayfield, uh, and she's very proud of that bill. But uh, I helped her an awful lot, so I hope she's watching this. Well, all right, <laughs> I, I do, I do. Uh, I'm I'm a transplant Hoosier. I've been here about 24, 25 years. Uh, so I, I, get, I consider myself a Hoosier at this point. I'm definitely a Hoosier veteran and uh, appreciate those programs. Now, there's been some talk um, about some other uh, legislation coming up to do with uh, scratch tickets mm -hmm. or lottery games. So those would be those more examples of things, of things that mm -hmm. have the budget attached to it versus saying, hey, here's an idea and we need you to pay for it. Right. And uh, there are some, some legislation that's being debated. Uh, it hasn't, of course, been filed yet. It's too early. 
Um, but uh, we know, uh, based on talking to various agencies, that they want to do something along those lines of some sort of a uh, gaming and within some of the veterans, uh, um, like the BFW, mm -hmm. uh, the Legion, where they could then benefit uh, the profits from that would go to fund uh, programs like um, some of the things that we talked about, Military Family Relief Fund would be one. Um, we'll see. We'll see if that, if that can get traction and get going. Um, but yeah, um, a lot of legislation will be filed now in the next, uh, just shortly after the 19th of, uh, of November, that's Organization Day, it's the official beginning of the session, and legislation can be filed and it becomes public. And any of us, and yourself or anyone, all the listeners, can look at it and give uh, comments, which are very welcome and love, love to hear the comments. Uh, we want to make good legislation better. So that that's the key, and it's it's wonderful to hear that um, whether it's whether it's the actual legislation or the idea behind the legislation, or even just a motivating factor, it can just come from anybody, from an individual, mm -hmm. from a veteran, and you know we're talking about some uh, a veterans topics today, and we want everybody to know um, every county in Indiana, all 92 counties have a county veteran service officer. That person is there to provide our veterans, uh, all of our Hoosier veterans, and their dependents with expert knowledge of state and mm -hmm. federal benefits, how to file, where to file, and they'll kind of work with you on that benefits process from start to end. And, you know, we're lucky here to have legislators like you who want to hear from our county veteran service officers. We have six district service officers, which is one of the positions I hold, where we cover groups of those counties, so we have a a great chain of information that can get to folks too. So if veterans have issues with, um, you know, they want to look at proposed legislation, they have ideas about existing legislation or other issues that are important to them, you can definitely talk to your county veteran service officer and they can run that up the chain, so to speak, and get that to where it would need to be. Is there any other public forums or places people mm -hmm. can go? Well, there certainly is. And uh, one of the things I wanted to point out is uh, that if you would like to watch the uh, committee hearings as they take place, both in the House and the Senate, those are live online if you have uh, the internet. You can watch them. They're also archived, so you can go in if you couldn't watch while they were live and watch them. Um, but anyone is welcome to testify in committee. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a legislator to testify in committee. So, um, Joe, if you felt passionate about a bill one way or the other, and you would uh, like to testify in the committee. If you come sign in before the committee starts, I will certainly hear you. Uh, that's uh, something that the speaker has insisted on, and I agree with. Everyone sh should be heard. Well, that's great. And I, I imagine it would be through in.gov would be the main portal mm -hmm. to get to some to view that legislation. If you Google the Indiana General Assembly, I'll pull that web page okay. up. Then you can go at the top on the toolbar and click on committee, and then there would be a little video um, there, you just click on that video and it'll take you right to the video you want. Well, that's great. Based on that committee. Now, I know, I know when we talk about legislation and other information getting passed around, um, a lot of it will come through service organizations. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's the American Legion, right. the DAV, AMVETS, uh, the uh, VFW, mm -hmm. uh, those types of organizations. So, you know, they're more than just the post. Uh, we, uh, we all have posts in our town. Maybe some or all of those organizations, and it's a great gathering place. But those organizations go to a statewide and national level. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times, they're the folks who are communicating with you guys about different ideas. They do, and uh, we hear from them on a regular basis. And I, I just recently met with my veterans organizations at the State House. That's how I know about some of the legislation that's being proposed. It's very preliminary but it's being proposed and I uh, look forward to uh, seeing what they come up with. We talk to them all the time. Well, that's great that you guys have that working relationship and, and we also work with those folks through the county service officers mm -hmm. as well. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, today is Veterans Day, so it it's, it's a, a great day and for thank us you for to your service. Well, you're welcome. Sure. Thank you for being here and I want to thank you for coming to the cemetery today. Um, mm -hmm. We had a great. beautiful cemetery, uh, ceremony at the, cere mm -hmm. at the cemetery today mm -hmm. and um, it was a uh, you know, I know you've been there quite a bunch, and I just want folks to know that, you know, we have the, the state memorial cemeteries right here in Madison, Indiana, and Jefferson County, and Alan Burnham and the crew up there, it's just beautiful. It and beautiful. And to see the small crew, how much they do is amazing, but it, it is one of the most beautiful uh, memorial cemeteries I've seen, um, and it's right here for every Hoosier veteran, and it's, it's part of our uh, state government. It's under the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs who help 
maintain and run that facility, but if you haven't been, come down and see it any time. It's a, it's a great place to go. You can walk through, take a look around and meet the crew. and it, It's just a beautiful thing that's here, and it's great that it's right down here in, in your district. It is, and uh, it's a very uh, humbling experience to go there and see those who have given their life on, uh, for, the, for those of us uh, to keep us free. It's just uh, it's an amazing experience. You know, uh, talking to Alan a while ago, Joe, uh, Wreaths Across America will be at the cemetery uh, on the 14th of December to place wreaths on the graves of those uh, heroes, and uh, they could use some help. So if you, uh, the viewer, would like to go to the website for Wreaths Across America, there is a place there you can click on the Indiana Veterans Memorial Cemetery and make a contribution. Uh, they would greatly appreciate that. And if you've not seen the, uh, the cemetery with those wreaths on those graves, it's an amazing sight. Uh, come out and take a look at that. It's really something. So if you can help the uh, Indiana Veterans Memorial Cemetery with wreaths across America, they would appreciate it. All right. Well, we're here with State Representative Randy Fry, and we're going to take a quick break and hear from our sponsors, who we're very thankful to have to be able to put this show on. And we'll be back with a little more with Randy after this. A routine is a good thing to have. And sometimes a routine is a good thing to break. Start your morning at McDonald's with a hot, savory breakfast prepared fresh every morning, like a sausage McMuffin with egg or bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit that you can now mix and match for just four bucks until 11 a.m. Because if you don't deserve a morning that's a little easier and a lot tastier, who does? Okay, welcome back. Um, we're here with State Representative uh, Randy Fry, and we've been discussing legislation today and how it affects our Hoosier veterans. And uh, I thought it'd be great to discuss, we discussed some of the process earlier about how those bills come about and uh, where they go and who decides on them. And we have a successful bill mm -hmm. that's now, I think in July, was it? it, did it July 1st. Went into effect. And tell us a little bit about this uh, new bill that's now up and going that's going to help us veterans. Well, now, if you are a retired veteran and you live here in the state of Indiana and you're on pension, your pension will be uh, income tax exempt from Indiana. So Governor Holcomb, that was one of his um, priorities, and uh, he uh, led the charge on that. And it passed the General Assembly and uh, went off to him, and he signed it into law. So I think that's a, a great bill. We, we want our retiring veterans to come back here. They're as good as citizens as we could ever hope for. Um, some of the, uh, uh, you know, me being a retired firefighter, some of the firefighters that I worked with and some of the police officers that I'm aware of are former military. They're some of the finest employees you can get. Uh, so we want them to come back, and we wanted to make it so that their pension uh, was tax-exempt so that they would uh, be attracted here. But there's also another side of it, uh, Joe, and so I wanted to uh, take it to, as Governor Holcomb would say, the next level. And so I am preparing and to file legislation after the 19th that uh, would exempt Indiana income tax from active duty military. Um, I'm sure you're aware that uh, other states do that. We in Indiana do it for National Guard and Reserve, but not active military. And so uh, I think that's unfair and we need to fix that. I'm also aware that if you join the military and um, uh, you were moved to a different state, for instance, you can select whatever state of residency you want, and most of them do uh, based on a state that doesn't have an income tax, state income tax. So we don't want that. We want those uh, young people, when they're finished their military service, to come back to Indiana as their home. And uh, we also want them to know how much we appreciate their service. I think it's the right thing to do, and uh, certainly you have to understand it's a bill. It's not a law, and it may never become a law, but that's uh, where we're going to go. We're going to try to get that through and uh, try to get as much support as I can to get it done. Well, I think that's great, and I think that is that is a next step in that progression. Um, I, I know um, most folks, when they retire from the military and do a, a 20-year or longer mm -hmm. career, a lot of folks... In that, with that opportunity, wound up joining the military maybe sometime soon after high school or right. between their 18 and 21st birthday, mm -hmm. which means they're 40 years old when they retire. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other career people have afterwards. And, mm -hmm. and, it is. And then to have that retirement pay untaxed here is, is a way to attract folks to the state as well. If I could, I'd like to mention another bill that I helped get through a couple of years ago, which is specifically for our military. 
and that's I'm not sure if you're aware, but in Indiana, you cannot be a professional firefighter or a professional police officer after age 36. Mm -hmm. Well, if you started when, in the military when you're 18, you're going to be uh, 38 if you did 20 years, so you're over the age of 36, you would be uh, prohibited from doing so. We raised that age limit to 40, so that it gives those folks coming out of the military up to two years to join a police office, police department or fire department. Uh, again, we want those um, those military uh, personnel, they have wonderful training, they have discipline, they understand how to work as a team. Uh, we wanted them, and so uh, I was proud of that legislation as well. That's great. I mean, even more of that incentive to get those uh, maybe folks either to come back to Indiana mm -hmm. when they retire or from other places. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've helped um, in the past around the state here work with veterans who are retiring um, and wherever you are in the country they have a it's a full week of classes mm -hmm. and programs as they to learn about their retirement and one of the things all those classes cover is the states that tax the in, their uh, retirement as income mm -hmm. versus the ones who don't so it's great to be on that list as ones who don't I'm very proud of that and happy to support it so so we'll recap that so we we have right now in law that um, military retirement once mm -hmm. you're in 20 years or longer that's non-taxed correct and I know we have the third largest National Guard in the country in uh, Indiana I've heard that. so our National Guard and our reserve folks currently mm -hmm. that pay is not taxed correct. by the state and what you're, you're, the bill you're, you're proposing, mm -hmm. that's going to be in this session? It will up? be. It'll be filed shortly after Organization Day on the 19th of, of November. And uh, we'll come up and uh, be eligible to be assigned to a committee uh, sometime early January. Great. And that'll help our active duty members to Absolutely. be able to not have their active duty pay. It's the right thing to do. I think and it's, it's great. A, and it's also uh, uh, something that I think we uh, need to show our military personnel how much we appreciate them. Well, I think that's great. And uh, I appreciate that. Um, and I appreciate all that's going on in the legislature. I know in some other conversations we've had, um, you know, I, I'm just so happy to hear that not only on veterans' bills, but in general, our, our, our government here in Indiana is, uh, is a smooth government. Um, mm -hmm. I think everybody seems to work together really well. We um, try very hard. Both sides of the aisle. I appreciate that from you and all of our legislators. And mm -hmm. you know, it's it's great to be a Hoosier veteran. If you if you're out there and you you know you live in Indiana, we've got tons of great benefits that the state offers, which you can find at your county veteran service officer. You just got to go find that, folks. They're usually around the courthouse. You can go to in.gov forward slash DVA. You can find a map of the state, click the county, it'll give you your service officer's name, address, hours, and email. You can contact them. Go see them. Um, we have tons of benefits, federal and state, but what really works for you is you're only going to know on that individual meeting with your service officers. These folks are there for you. They're trained. There's no charge. This is just something for you as a veteran, so get down there, see them, uh, learn about some more of this process. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's, you know, I, I've had the opportunity to watch a little of the legislation on, on the internet mm -hmm. and, and when it's your state and it's your issues, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's not boring at all. It's quite mm -hmm. interesting to see how it works. So I encourage anybody to do that as well. And uh, I, really, I would as well. well. I really want to thank you My very pleasure. much, sir. Yeah, it's, it's great, great to be to here. Thanks to for having we'll me We'll do it today. again soon. Okay. Right. I look forward to it. Thank you. And I really want to say thanks to all our sponsors. Um, without our sponsors, this doesn't happen. So we have great folks behind the scenes um, helping put this together. But, you know, we do this and other opportunities we all have around the state. It takes money to do it, and we need sponsors to do it. So to all of our sponsors for today's show, thank you so much. And we couldn't do it without you. Thanks for watching.